All right, Matthew, let's talk about immigration law real quick. Shouldn't we talk about the important things like Twitter? Is it still running? Like, how are we going to know what's going on with immigration law? With anything? Yeah, Twitter closes down. There was a life before Twitter, and I think that there's, you know, people exist in other spaces online. We're just going to have to get used to it. Do I have them. to go back to Facebook? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I don't think so. But yeah, Twitter, you know, look, one thing I don't like is everyone getting all sentimental about it. <laughs> people were really sentimental about it last night. And I just thought, you know what? Okay. Well, I, I think it's funny that it's not, I believe it's gone when it's gone. You know? Right. Yeah. There was like a sort of, uh, it was strange. There was a quality to Twitter last night, Thursday night. That was sort of like there was a comet hurling towards the earth <laughs> and, you know, saying goodbye to friends. And and then the next morning, it was still just sort of there and functional. But people who are smarter than me, uh, you know, predict that it, it is going to have serious issues. But no, seriously, if you were without, let's say Twitter ended right now. Yeah. In one week, how many of those people that you interact with on Twitter would you remember? <laughs> I already went through actually because I, I deleted my account and, um, a couple of weeks ago. And then I realized there's a couple of people I can only contact through Twitter that I needed to get a hold of. So I, you know, reinitiated it or whatever. But I already went through the people I follow and I made a list of like, OK, these are sort of the journalists that I care about. And, you know, you can sign up for people's sub stacks or you can read a newspaper. There's ways to follow people outside of Twitter. We're just going to have to like put in a little effort. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm off for it. So. All right. Well, look, it was nice knowing you. Yeah. Just send me a, like a text message every once in a while. Like when send me a text message, when there's amnesty, if you could. All right, cool. I appreciate you know what it. I need? I need like a sad trombone on my soundboard. You don't have one? No. All I have is. Uh... <laughs> That's the only sound you have. <laughs> was that loud? Yeah. It, no, okay. it, was good. it was good. I mean. All right. Well, listen. We'll just have to use that for everything. <laughs> we'll use it when we're serious. Like something good happens. We'll be like. And then um, I like to mourn the passing of a great man. Donald J. Trump has passed away. And then we'll use it sarcastically. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of works, actually. (laughs) I mean, not at all, but sure. (laughs) No, it does. The key is that people need to understand when we're being sarcastic. So like when I say Dick Durbin is going to finally present the Dream Act. The audience should understand that I'm being sarcastic because it has no way of passing. But I did want to talk about the Dream Act today. So, oh, okay. So, what's happened with the Dream Act? Well, this so why is are we fir- talking about it. I mean, for, first of all, this is a thought exercise. Okay. I had I had this thought. When did you first become aware of your social security number? Oh, I, I saw this um, on your socials. Um. I'm guessing. I mean, you came of age before Social Security existed, so. So I was one of the first in line. Mm-hmm. Um, probably Your when Social was, Security number is five. <laughs> <laughs> probably when I was like, I guess like 15 or 16, when I was going to get like the old work permit, and I would guess around that age. But you didn't get a work permit. What are you talking about? A work permit. A work permission. You mean going to get a job? Yeah. You. So maybe I don't know. If, Things are different there where you're at, but where I'm at, kids actually have to get a work permit or they have to get a permission to work. Like you have to go to the doctor, you have a physical and all that. You have to, yeah, that's the thing. What is all this bullshit? That's insane. No. Yeah. So I was thinking about it too. I'm pretty sure I started working at Subway when I was 15, sandwich artist. And you work with Jerry? it must, what's that? Did you, <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's not make those jokes. That's terrible. Did I work with Jared? <laughs> LOL. No, I didn't. But I must have filled out a W-9. Is it a W-9, right? When you get a job? Or no, an I-9. I-9. Yeah. I-9. Yeah. Good, good, good job, immigration lawyer. 
<laughs> what, what am I just some sort of immigration lawyer person? No, I must have filled out an I-9, which calls for your social. I don't have any recollection of when I first saw my card. Do you know where your social security card is right now? I don't have one. You don't have it? No, I haven't had a card in decades. Okay, but you've got the number memorized. Yeah. Committed to memory. Okay. Should I, should I say it out loud? It would be hilarious if you went to retire and you found out like it's not even your number. <laughs> you have zero social security credits. <laughs> So anyways, I was thinking about this Some guy in North Dakota, like, he's <laughs> like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was thinking about this because this is a, a common story. I don't know if you've heard these stories from dreamers. And again, dreamers are people who are brought here usually by their parents. Not always came here as young children and with a pound you know, of fentanyl each. In each yeah. Year. You know, when in one of those little kitty sized backpacks, all the drugs you could possibly stuff in there. We're being sarcastic. Bow, bow, but, bow. <laughs> yeah, air horn. Um, and what often happens with these kids is they reach us this sort of age, 15, 16, 17, 18, where, okay, society is calling on your social security number here in the United States, right? So you need it to get a job at Subway or to apply for college. And a lot of times these kids are unaware that this is sort of a barrier that exists, right? They're unaware of their lack of a social security number. Have you heard those stories before? People like going to the, the guidance yeah, counselor? I mean, and Yeah, it's not only that, right? Or if they're going to get a driver's license, that's a, a big one. Right. Here in Washington, you can get a license without it. So that's something that's not been a huge part of my yeah. practice, but that happens in most states, right? And I'm sure it's probably common in Washington school trips. Lots of times people, kids around here will take school trips up to Canada. Right. And then they're like going through the process and like their parents have to kind of tell them you can't go. And that might be the first time that they've learned that they don't have legal status in the country. Right. And that sucks when you have a 15. My son is 16. And I mean, look, being a teenager sucks. Right. I mean. When you're a teenager, it's like the worst time of your life, right? Everything sucks, Definitely. you know, <laughs> like, I mean, we don't have like a whole genre of like teen angst music, like rock and roll throughout the ages for no reason. For right? no reason. Right. No. And so imagine going through all that self-doubt and all these things and then finding out that. You can't get a driver's license. You can't go on the school trip. You can't get a job at, you know, McDonald's or wherever, like your other friends, because of this reason. So honestly, there are kids who grow up, they have no idea. They have no concept, right? Now, I wanted to have an episode that people could play for their relatives. Oh. We're trying to garner some sympathy here. So a lot of people are under the understanding that, and I, maybe you've heard this one too, well, if you're 25 and you've never had a, a work permit or a social security card, what's taking you so long to apply for your citizenship? Yeah. You, you should have done that. You shouldn't need DACA. You should have gone to the citizenship card store. <laughs> Pulled yourself up by them, their bootstraps. Right. And up that belt loop. So not only do these kids who are often actually not kids, they're grown adults reach this point where they realize, okay, I can't actually just go get a job, even at Subway or wherever. I can't actually apply for college or go on this field trip. But the assumption that most people have that there's then a next logical step of just like getting the card. Yeah. You just have to do something, right? You got to fill out some forms. You got to probably pay something. Of course. Yeah. Go wait. In. Maybe, yeah, maybe you have to wait your turn. No. It's not possible. There, yeah. There's no application process. Maybe you know, and I had an, a cousin once tell me this. Well, I had a friend who was an illegal and he went through the process and paid the fees and, and worked really hard. And now he has his papers. And, and that's great that that, first of all, that story might be bull****, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure this guy told everyone he had papers now magically. Or it could be that that one person did qualify for 
in some weird way to get their papers, but it's not something that's universally available to these kids. Yeah. I, I gotta say one thing. If getting your papers, so to speak, was predicated on how hard you work or wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> the vast majority of people would have it. And trust me, there are some that do have their papers who never would have gotten it. You know, I mean, we all have those clients who they just through whatever circumstance, it kind of falls their way. Right. Right. And nothing special about them. I mean, nothing bad about them, nothing all that special. They just happen to perhaps come in on a visa with their parents when they were younger and meet somebody and get married um, right. instead of being taken over the border by their parents. You know, no, nothing, nothing that they did put them in a position that was better than that kid that they're sitting next to in, in high school. It just so happened their parents maybe came in on a visa or, or some other strange circumstance that we could spend hours talking about. But the notion that all you need to do is work hard and want it enough. It's just not true. Yeah. It's just silly. It's a and, silly and notion. So much of it is a function of, you know, whenever I hear people say, well, my parents did it the right way. My par I'm a you know first generation. My parents did it the right way. It's like, you know what? Your dad probably came in 1986. He bought some fake labor documents from from like a a fake farm or maybe he really did farm work you know not to disparage your father who i don't know but and then he got papers through the amnesty so it was purely a function of just historical luck and not that he did something correct you know the people who got papers in the amnesty also came illegally and worked illegally but they were beneficiaries of a program that was passed by Congress, and now they're permanent residents and U.S. citizens for the most part. And before that, there was the registry, which worked in a similar way, where if you could just show that you'd been here since a certain date, you would get papers, right? So those tools and options, even something like there's a law called 245I, which we won't get all the way into, but the last time Congress extended that law, they extended it to April 30th of 2001. So the kinds of tools used by the parents of people who say, my parents did it the right way, are in the you know, trash heap of history at this point. They, they no longer exist. It, no, it is perception, right? From And it's funny because I, I think I probably told this story before, but when me and my wife moved into our new house, the neighbor, a neighbor walked by and we were talking to him and he found out I was an immigration lawyer. And he's like, oh, he's a white guy, preface this. And he said, oh, my, my son went to the prom with this Mexican girl, which of course seems relevant, right, into the conversation. Sure. And I'm like, oh. That's I know a Mexican. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know her, but like somebody I know knows her. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, well, his mom, and he mentioned this girl's mom, and I know the girl's mom because she was a client. Mm -hmm. so happens to be a client and oh she owns this store in town and i go oh okay oh yeah we know her i didn't say she was a client and he's like yeah well you know you know she's like perfectly legal she did it the right way and now i'm just wanting to get out of the conversation you know right as quickly as i can before something you know really <laughs> really offensive happens but i'm thinking to myself my wife is looking at me with this kind of knowing look and she's trying not to laugh that she didn't do things the right way, so to speak, right? In the legal sense, I, I'm not moral sense. You know, she came in illegally years ago. I know she benefited from 245I through a labor certification. Not that I did, because I don't do that. Shit. But someone had done that years before. I helped her with her citizenship years later. So he actually probably had no idea her immigration status. He just presumed she owned a store. She was successful. She's probably legal, so to speak, because, you know, she has this daughter who is very nice and, and speaks English and she owns a store and she speaks English. But it's this whole perception where he's completely accepted this woman. And if you had told him their story about someone else, he probably would have been like, they're illegal. People's legalities are often 
really just kind of presumed by people and based on their goodness and, and how they people make assumptions about people and just really to fit their own internal right narrative like this guy i'm very sure he has all the hallmarks of a trump supporter and his little white boy was you know dating a mexican girl and i'm sure he had to come to terms with it some way somehow so he had a narrative that her mom did it all the right way right and the assumption that there are right ways and there's you know wrong ways and people are easily divided into these two groups i think with the dreamers the important thing for people to keep in mind is there's not just some easy way and it's not just that it's not easy it's that there's no way <laughs> well also let's let's talk about what it means to be a, a dreamer right there's a legal point if you came into the united states if you entered before what date 2000 well it depends because i think it's you know, basically, the Dream Act is a law that was proposed, I think, for the first time in like 2006. Oh no, that it's been around since like 2002. Oh, okay. As an idea, to maybe even earlier than that. But the Dream Act, as enacted, and there's a air quote since this is a podcast, everyone can see that by Barack Obama through his. Oh, you're talking about DACA. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, the DREAM Act is a proposed law that's never passed that would require yeah. a certain number of years of continuous physical presence and good moral character and paying penalties and fines and application fees. And and then I think even some amount of higher education, I think, is what the DREAM Act required. For DACA, when it was announced in 2012, it's had a fixed date of continuous physical presence, which was five years at the time of the announcement. So you have to show that you've been in the United States since June 15th, 2007. At the time, it was five years, but that date was fixed. It's not floating. So that means yeah. if you, you know, and now it's tied up in court, so you can't even be a first time applicant. But if you were, you'd have to show 15 years of continuous physical presence with pay stubs and bills and bank statements and all these things. And you also have to show that you entered the United States before you turned 16. And if that was in 2003, that means you need some sort of documentary evidence. And don't you have to have been in unlawful status, right? Right. That's a whole so, other thing. Yeah. So children of, like, say someone came over on a work visa, an H-1B, and brought their children. And now we've never really done a show on the backlog for employment-based visas and all that means even don't do that work. So, but it's a whole show. But there have been parents who have been here on professional visas for years and years, and their children have grown up here on derivative style visas. And they're kind of getting to the end of the line and the kids are getting out of status and they can't benefit from even DACA. Right. Because they were in lawful status. So they're, what do they call them? Documented dreamers? Is that? Yeah, something like that. So, I've never had to deal too much with that. So, well, you, there you have a child who has done things the right way, right? Their parents did everything the right way. You know, they Quote, came unquote, over. Right. And, yeah, I'm employment based visas. They they worked here for a long time. Kids went to school here, and now they're getting to be 21, where they're no longer covered under these visas. And they won't have any lawful status. Now they have lawful entries into the United States. So this 21 or 22 year old college student or fresh out of college wants to maintain status. Either they have to do it through quickly getting some type of employment or getting married. And, you know, people shouldn't have to get married in order to get status. Right. And that is a whole other thing. So, yeah, people can do things the right way. And they don't get rewarded. And I guess people in the minds of the right, right? Right. Everyone does everything wrong and they get rewarded. And that's not true. So. Right. We always make efforts to not rank immigrants in terms of worthiness or deservedness. Is that a word? Deservedness? Yeah. Because oftentimes it's sort of like to no fault of their own. In other words, it's somebody's fault. Like yeah. the parents. And we definitely don't want to do that. At the same time, the DREAM Act is such low hanging fruit. This should be super easy to pass. It's just about taking these people 
who are just trying to have jobs, pay into social security, you live normal lives and just allowing them to do that. And again, it's not like some cakewalk. They've got to pay fines and subject themselves to background checks and all these sorts of things. And it can't pass. And it's, well, yeah, I think I mean, it's come close a couple times and it's very, see, very, very, listen, this is what needs, we need to do. We need to completely shut down the Southern border. Right. It's I, I, verified that that Southern border is 100% secure. Mm-hmm. Then we got to go to the Northern border. We got to make sure the northern border is 100% secured. Mm -hmm. Then, okay, then we need to take care of the visa overstays. No, no, no. You're wrong. Do you know how many borders we actually have? All the sea borders? The answer is four. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, there's an ocean. There's an ocean there, but you know what? You ever heard of a thing called a boat? Yeah. Can a boat get over a wall? I don't think so. We got got to clamp all that down. Four walls. Yeah. So <laughs> and then, actually, and then once once we take care of all of that, then we can come back and we can start to discuss. Do you understand what I'm saying, Stephen? Yeah. Then we, we can start have a to conversation. Talk about. I did want to mention this. People like you, Stephen, <laughs> want to all for free. I did want to mention this because this is the talking point that you're starting to hear. I mean, you've always heard this from the right, but I think Ted Cruz said it specifically about introducing the Dream Act right now which is what Senator Dick Durbin brought up. And Ted Cruz said, well, if we're going to talk about immigration, it's got to be about sealing the southern border first and then whatever. And first of all, that's not a genuine position because... It's not made in good faith. It's not made in good faith. Yes, exactly. Because there's no metric by which the southern border could ever be considered hermetically sealed. So, Well, we could not seal the southern border without completely rewriting immigration law. We just can't. And also, I don't think we could seal the southern border without doing things that would go against even the most moderately conservative person's sensibilities. Right. And the other thing is, like, all these things are interrelated. So in order to reduce the number of illegal crossings, you need to increase the number of legal visas available and provide legal pathways so that people are coming over with papers in their cars as they would prefer to do. And so the idea that you would first seal the border and then address the visa issue, it's like, well, if anything, they've got the order completely backwards. Like first, you should figure out how to get people here in more legal ways in in greater numbers to satisfy labor demand and personal demand and all those sorts of things. And then you can deal with whatever remaining security issues might exist. But also the idea that you can't just do two things at the same time. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, right? So it's totally disingenuous, the idea that- That's the word. First border security, that's the word. Found it, and then we'll help the dreamers. And really with the dreamers, like those two issues aren't even really related. Like they have nothing to do with each other. So it's just a constant, like you want something, you have to give us something, right? In in fairness, that's how a lot of negotiations work. However, usually they're tied in together, right? Right. We know it's disingenuous because if the Democrats proposed a bill that was the DREAM Act plus... $10 $10 trillion of border funding, drones, electrified fences, alligator moats, they would still say no, because it's all about punishing brown people, basically, right? Yeah. Like, is, is there some sort of border solution that you think they would be satisfied with to where you could get 10 Republicans to vote for it in the Senate? No, because it would all, I mean, no. Because it's, just... it's not really about that. <laughs> yeah. Or they would say, okay, yeah, but. Maybe what you're given is okay, but you're asking for too much, right? Right. You might also hear a floodgates argument, and that's also dumb because any kind of Dream Act is going to have a pegged date of, again, probably five years of continuous physical presence, maybe longer. Yeah, but the argument is always, well, we do it now, then we're gonna, they're going to come back later and do it then. Because they talk about the amnesty from 1986. They talk about the amnesty from 1986 like it just happened. 
That's the year I graduated from high school. That's how long ago it was. Matthew's old. Yeah, I am. But the thing is, is what's happened in, since 1986 is that there has been no real change to our visa system. No real systemic change. To well, our- there's been changes. It's well, gotten worse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's gotten more restrictive, but no right. more liberalization of the, of the visa system, which, of course, they don't want. And if you're still on Twitter, you'll see there's maybe a viral tweet from Ben Shapiro complaining about low birth rates, and he blames it on same-sex marriage. Because if gay people didn't get married, they would be out having babies, I guess. So Ben Shapiro and then Tucker Carlson came out, and maybe it was Jesse Walters. They're all the same people on Fox, encouraged Americans to have more babies so we didn't mm-hmm. have to bring in foreigners and oh, foreign right. babies. So Blown that dog whistle a little hard. Yeah. <laughs> Reaching the human ears. <laughs> so we are struggling right now. We do need more people. But, you know, a country needs immigrants. It just does. I know it, it's not like people on the right will roll Such their a eyes. Heart. Yeah, we'll roll their eyes on it. But our country, the greatest productivity era in our country was when we had more liberalized immigration. You and I have talked to thousands of people who came to this country illegally without authorization. And the idea that any of them were sitting there going, you know, we're due for an amnesty (laughs) or that if we pass the Dream Act now, that there's some parent in like El Ranchito, Michoacan, Mexico going. They just passed the DREAM Act. I wasn't going to go, but now I think I'll take my child because maybe they'll pass another DREAM Act in 30 years. And for 30 years, we'll be hunted by immigration and we'll live undocumented. But eventually, the Senate will garner the courage to pass the DREAM Act again. Like, it's just... That's well, not how these calculations are made. Here, here it is when you talk to people, right? Why did you come? And lots of times it's fear-based, right? So let's take them out of the equation. Because not everyone comes based on fear. We have a lot of economic migrants, a lot of environmental migrants, especially currently. And, you know, they're coming because... They want to have a better life for maybe themselves, but most likely more often than not, yeah, it's for their family. It, Turns out they like eating every yeah. day. They want to it eat every day. Might be for the children they left behind or might be for their parents and siblings they left behind. And how many times have you heard, yeah, I just want to work here for a few years to save up some money, just to send back, and then I can go back, Right. Right. You hear that a lot. And then the reality is, is people find out like they don't make as much money here as they initially thought. Living here can be expensive. And after they go through all that, they realize if they go back, the possibilities of coming back is not going to happen legally. So they're going to have to go through whatever they went through to get here in the first place, which probably wasn't that pleasant. And it's more expensive now to cross back over. Oh, yeah. The system has definitely trapped a lot of people here who would prefer to just like come and go. (laughs) These individuals, they hope things are going to work out. Right. And, you know, they hope something's going to happen that's going to break for them so they can get legal status and they can bring their family over. Or if their family's already here, their their family can have legal status and stay here. Um, But I've never met. I haven't had one client who came here with the expectation that that was going to happen. It was a hope. You know, it wasn't like, oh, yeah, this is definitely going to work out for us. It was like, hopefully this works out. So, yeah, yeah, the whole floodgates thing is, is a very silly argument. The thing is, there's nothing right now. And apparently we have floodgates, right? Right. So, like, you know, it's just a very politically. There's no hope of even the Dream Act, which is the exciting ending of the show. <laughs> and people are still coming. Anyways, I really wanted people. I have to go because I have a hearing at one. I forgot to dress for it, so I'm gonna have my camera off. 
You don't have like a suit jacket in your office? I don't. I don't. I got I got a couple if you want to. I even got a shirt if you want. Maybe we could Photoshop it on uh, <laughs> green screen. It. <laughs> Anyways, I hope that people think about your own life and how much you've taken for granted just sort of like having papers and being born in this country. It's something that you didn't exactly choose to do or earn. And how a lot of these immigrants are in the same exact situation. They're not all children now. A lot of them are grown up. Like Matthew was saying, a lot of them are in your community. Their kids go to school with your kids. They're just regular ass people. And they deserve to be on the same legal footing as us. I would say that even more, and this is going to sound hokey, if we could all start kind of seeing them as actually human beings, I think the conversation would go better. And if anyone on the right was hearing this, I can hear and feel their eyes rolling, right? But that is the playbook on the right to not view these people as humans because it's easy to on non-humans and view them as not only humans, but view them as they're good, decent people. I mean, I'm obviously there are some bad people, right? I've known and I've heard in the news of some bad people that were actually born here in the United States. It happens from what? time to time. What? Yeah. <laughs> so these are just regular ass humans. And then you have someone like Marjorie Taylor Greene opining that Ukraine doesn't really have it that bad because they've only had 82,000 Russians invade their country and we've had 5 million. Mm, totally the same uh, <laughs> but there there it is that is you know where we are the comparison and let's like say okay if you're totally against immigration or whatnot at least look at that person and say you know what that 18 year old kid whose family was barely making enough to eat while his ass was in the house decided to trek from honduras to the united states so he can work here, so he can send money back, so his siblings could go to school and eat and his parents could eat. Let's not look at him as some type of gangbanger, right? Drug smuggling kid. He's just a kid. He's a child who's working his ass off doing yard work or out in the farms or doing construction or working at Popeye's in the kitchen, wherever the he's working. And that's a good kid. If an 18 year old did that here in this country, move from Philadelphia to, to Washington State to pick apples, and that was the only way he could feed his family, they would put that motherfucker on the front page of the New York mm -hmm. Times, and right. he would be a god prince, you know? Right. So let's, let's look at it the same way. This doesn't mean that you have to think they get legal status or whatnot, and maybe you disagree with all that, but let's say, okay, let's take out their bad people type thing. They're just people. They're good people. They're bad people. But they're just people. And if we can look at it that way, then maybe you can get somewhere. But the inability of the right to look at them as human beings at all right. is what I think really gets us stuck. Right. All right, Matthew. Good little combo. Wish me luck in this uh, decision that's about to be rendered. Good luck. Are we positive? Feeling good? No. You, gotta get, you have the big yellow legal pad out to um, take notes about for the appeal? Take some notes. Oh, yeah. Definitely. All right, man. All right. Have fun. Good luck. Thanks. I love you. Love you too. Good game. See ya.